Well, hello everybody and welcome to this edition of Aviation Stuff. I'm your host, Captain Max. Today we're going to talk about the link between King Kong and aviators. Yes, there is definitely a link directly between King Kong and aviators. For the purposes of this video, we will not be including any of the Japanese or Toho Studios King Kongs. Former World War I aviator Marion C. Cooper had a dream about a giant gorilla running around the streets of New York tearing the place apart. When he awoke, he wrote it down and created the idea for King Kong. Being a former World War I bomber pilot, the first scene that he wrote was the one of the climactic air battle at the end of the movie, and then he built the rest of the script to accommodate that end. He teamed up with another former World War I aviator, Ernest Schrodeschak. Schrodeschak had been an aerial observer and aerial photographer in the First World War. They managed to sell the idea to RKO Pictures. Ernie Schrodeschak was put in charge of directing the actors, while Marion Cooper primarily worked with directing the special effects. Being former World War I aviators, Schrodeschak and Cooper got along very well and even cast themselves in their old jobs as the crew of the aircraft that attacked Kong. So when the planes attack King Kong, they are actually killing the very creature that they themselves created. It was said afterwards that only the men that created Kong were good enough to destroy him. So to recap, World War I pilot Marion C. Cooper has a dream about a giant ape and conceives of the idea of King Kong. He conceives of a great air battle and writes the script accordingly. Then he teams up with former aerial cameraman Ernie Schrodeschak and convinces RKO to let them make the picture. And then they cast themselves in their old wartime roles as pilot and gunner. This started a tradition of having the men who create Kong portray the men who try to destroy him. In 1976, Dilo De Laurentiis made a contemporary version of King Kong. They acquired the talents of special effects expert and suit actor Rick Baker to bring King Kong to life and combined this with full-scale animatronics. Rick Baker had completed an extremely complex suit that allowed the face to emote, but the results of meshing both the full-scale animatronics and Baker's suit gave excellent results. This time, King Kong is taken down by a U.S. Army National Guard UH-1 helicopter gunship atop the Twin Towers. Baker did such a good job that he became the gold standard for special effects makeup in Hollywood and would go on to create many more iconic characters. Thirty years later, Peter Jackson decided to remake the original King Kong as a 1933 period piece. Once again, they called Rick Baker but not to portray the titular character of Kong, but, wait for it, yes, as the pilot that kills King Kong. That's right, that's him. That's Rick Baker playing the squadron commander of the naval aircraft that are sent to kill Kong. So just like the 1933 original movie, the men who brought Kong to life are also the ones that destroyed him. Ah, but there's more. Now we have the 2017 Kong Skull Island movie. In this one, Kong once again faces off against UH-1 gunships, as well as a Sea Stallion and a Chinook. And yes, I know the Army never used Sea Stallions, but let's go with it. Actor Toby Kibble did the motion capture work as Kong, so essentially he played Kong. But he also plays Major Chapman, Samuel L. Jackson's executive officer and pilot of the Sea Stallion. So in the tradition, of men who create Kong, playing the ones that try to destroy him, Kebble plays both Kong and one of his attackers. Over the years, the special effects departments have gone from stop motion miniatures to full-size animatronics and men in very complicated suits to complete and total computer-generated or CGI effects. But the tradition of having people who create Kong portray the aviators that try to destroy him is alive and well. Well, this is Captain Max with Aviation Stuff. I hope you found this interesting. And by the way, if you should ever have to attack a giant monster from an aircraft, keep your distance. Stay away. Do not get close. Is anybody listening? Ah!